You can now train your own consistent characters using OpenArt AI's character feature. It's a very powerful tool and incredibly simple to use. And today I'm going to show you how it works. But I also want to mention OpenArt are sponsoring this video and there's a link in the description if you want to check it out. To get started, we log into OpenArt AI and there's a section here called characters. If I click on that, I've got three options to set my character. I can describe it and generate. I can upload a single image, which is actually incredibly powerful and simple, or I can upload four or more images over here. I'm going to start off with a description and we need to give our character a name. I'm going to call it Shaolin Bob. I'm going to describe my character. I have a young Shaolin monk, bald head, dressed in orange robes, small slender build and fierce face. Now I can also hit enhance over here. So I'm going to click that and you see it's even added a little bit more to sort of help enhance my character description. And this will help us come up with how the character looks. Now I can type in a style here or choose from below. So I'm going to select, I'm going to go for 3D and click create previews. And we've got here our young Shaolin monk. I really like this version of the character. So I click on him, I click create character and it will train up our character. We give OpenArt about 10 minutes to create our character before we start using it. And once your character is finished training, you'll get a little section down here saying my characters with Shaolin Bob. Keep in mind, you've also got a bunch of other characters down here you can use that sort of come with OpenArt AI. And if you ever want to find this page again, it's straight under the characters tab on the left. But if I want to create with my character, I come down, hit create. And one of the first things you'll notice is the model is actually the character. We can change the weight of that. And we have Shaolin Bob. And we have to keep that name in there if we want him to show up in the image. So I type in a prompt, something like, I have Shaolin Bob doing Kung Fu outside of Shaolin Temple, big moon in the sky. Click create. And you see we have our images up here. And that doesn't look too bad. And you can see it's really adhered to that character reference. And from image to image, I tried a few different prompts here. And you can see how it's really kept that character pretty true, even down to the facial expression. But one thing to consider is that if you're adding multiple characters into a scene, consider describing them in your prompt. Otherwise, it can very likely turn out like your character reference, like in this image here. Now, before I move on to the other training methods, I also want to cover the weight and sort of see the difference as we go through the slide. So I have here a prompt, Shaolin Bob in an office, business meeting, everyone wearing a suit. If I bring the weight right down to zero, and then go through and step it out. Let's see what kind of impact it has. Starting with a weight of zero, you can see the Shaolin is basically nowhere to be found. And this goes up to a maximum 1.5. But as we slowly creep these numbers up in increments of say 0.2, you can see how he goes bald, he loses the glasses, and then his costume slowly changes. And over time, some of the people around him starts to change more into that Shaolin as well. So it has a really strong influence on the image when you crank it up and you may need to experiment with different levels for the image you're trying to create. But coming back to the characters page, how well does it work when we create with one single image? I click on start with one image. I'm gonna give my character a name. I'm gonna call her white haired witch. I'm gonna drag this image in. And then I simply click create character. Then we come back in 10 minutes to see how our character turned out. Now, once again, we have our character, the white haired witch. Let's go to create and see what we can make with this character. And now I'm going to add my prompt. I have a white haired witch in a power pose, casting magic, purple glowing energy inside a dark castle, stormy night, high energy, fantasy style imagery. So I'll try to get a little bit more detail with this one. We're also going to enhance the prompt to get something really detailed this time. The simpler the prompt, the more it's going to rely on the character, so it can be a little bit stiffer. So if you want to get a little bit more flexibility in that character, adding a more detailed prompt is going to be your best option. Now, before I go ahead and create this image, I'm actually going to bring the character weight up a little bit because there's a little bit more costuming on here and I really want to capture that. I'm going to make it a solid 1 or 1.01 and then I'm going to hit create to see what we can get. You can see here we've got the hat, the hair, the characters remain the same. The costume has changed a little bit but otherwise it has captured that pretty well. If we really wanted to dial that costume in, what we could do is after we mention the dynamic pose, we can say wearing all black with a black hat. That way we make certain that we're describing the actual costume we want our witch to actually be wearing. But also I'm gonna change this to 16 to nine and again, see what results we get. 
And this time our costume has been a little bit more dialed in while still getting that same aesthetic of image we got with the previous prompt. But coming back, we're gonna dial this prompt back a fair bit. We're gonna come back. We're gonna leave the costume the way it is. And I'm gonna add, sitting on some old wooden stairs, dark cinematic lighting. Because one of the things we can do also is I can take an image such as this one here of this girl sitting on some stairs, which I got from pexels.com. And I can come to composition reference. I'm gonna click on that, drag my image in, and try and use this image to influence how the image is laid out. Now, because it's a portrait image, I will change this to tablet to match the layout of this image. I'm gonna click create and see how well it follows that pose. And you can see here already, we've got that pose pretty close. Put them side by side and scroll through. On the right, you can see the generation. The left, you can see the reference. And it's really, really spot on, even the way it's sort of held her pose, but converted the elements and the character to what we've prompted for and to our character reference. So that's a pretty powerful tool for getting images looking the way you want them to. But even just with some basic prompts, much like before, you can still get some pretty cool images, such as the ones I have here. A lot of different varieties here. These are all just done with some basic prompts. So definitely, I think this is worth having a play with. And this is all off one single uploaded image, which is pretty powerful in my opinion. But finally, I'm gonna take these four images here and I'm gonna use them on a character. So I go back to my characters page. It says start here with four plus images. So I can add more than four. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with those four of this Kung Fu guy, drag him in. I'm gonna call him Kung Fu Man. Hit create character to train my character. And again, I give it 10 minutes. Now it's done. We can hit create and start creating some images using this character as well. I have Kung Fu Man dressed in black robes, wearing a black hat, in a fighting pose, crouched low in front of the pyramids of Egypt. I've also brought that weight up again since he has a very particular costume. And I'm gonna see what results we get from this prompt. And you can see the image that we get, very consistent with our character, pyramids of Egypt. It's done a great job of keeping that consistent and changing that pose. But I tried a few other prompts as well to get something a little bit different, just like some different scenarios. And then also tried to just play with the costume a little bit. So I tried to get him to dress up as Batman or Superman and uh, or even just stop and to perform an activity like playing with Lego. So you can see from these images, the kind of modifications you can make. There's still a lot of flexibility with these characters. And again, you can always adjust the weight if you need to. Now some tips for when you're creating or creating with these characters. One is it does work best with realistic characters. Not to say you can't use non-realistic characters, but that's gonna give you the most consistency when using this feature. But also be very descriptive with your prompts you may need to describe the actual costume if you want it to stay the same, but this is great because it means you can also change the costume and keep a lot of the character elements in place. So you get a little bit more flexibility with that character as well. So the simpler that you describe these prompts, the more stiff things are gonna look, whereas the more detailed you get with the character or any of the elements or animals, etc., in the rest of the image, you're gonna get a better result by being more detailed with your prompt. But also experiment with the character weight and find the right balance for each image that you're creating depending on what it is that you want to see. But don't forget, before you go ahead and make your characters, you can still come down to this character library down here and there are some sample characters that you can try out. So if I try Elf Ranger Lana, I say something like, is jumping in an inflatable jumpy castle at a party? Hit create. Then I can experiment with my prompts and see what kind of images I can create using all of these various characters. But otherwise, I highly recommend checking out OpenArt AI and having a play with this character feature. If it's something that interests you, there's a link in the description. If you wanna check it out, they are the sponsor of this video. I wanna thank them for sponsoring the video. And also that is it for today, guys. I hope you found this useful and I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Otherwise, have a great day. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.